focused on you. Breaking at noon, former St. Louis Alderman Jeffrey Boyd has been released from prison. He had been serving a three year prison sentence for taking bribes from a local businessman. He's now in the custody of residential reentry management, currently at a halfway house. We're told he'll remain there until a judge sets a supervision date. He's slated for release on July 1st. In 2022, Boyd pleaded guilty along with former Aldermanic President Louis Reed and ex Alderman John Collins Muhammad to taking bribes. Also topping our news at noon, the weather on the way to 70 degrees today as we take a live look outside. But don't get used to it. There's a possibility of snow by Sunday. Thanks for being here at noon and welcome to those streaming our news or watching on the 5 Plus app. I'm Kay Quinn. That's right, snow is in the weather forecast, but not before St. Louis celebrates Mardi Gras. Meteorologist Jim uh, Gary Frank in for Jim Castillo and here to tell us about that Mardi Gras forecast. Yeah, enjoying the weather right now. Obviously, another day that we've started off warm the first week or so of February. We've already seen a couple of days at 70 degrees in many spots, and that's where we're headed again today as it's warm outside. Clouds have thickened up just a bit. This will be our last day of 70, at least for the near future. As we look outside, though, we've warmed up significantly. Our clouds are thicker to the south and that's where we see a little bit more moisture but we do have those high clouds to the north overall though temps have warmed up nicely into the mid 60s at 65 in Creve Coeur, 63 in Lake St. Louis the big picture shows things are changing mid 50s in Kirksville and Kansas City and that's going to be affecting us we're at 66 officially so we're still some nine degrees away from the record as we continue to warm up over the next hour or so we're still headed for the low 70s still going to be a very warm day we'll talk about that record specifically but it's warm and windy this afternoon a cold front arrives later Later on and then a few snowflakes. We've also timed out where I do expect that to be more impactful on Sunday into Monday. Keep in mind it's still very warm, but we'll talk about uh, some of the ingredients for that storm this weekend as well as what the next week brings after we get rid of these 70s. I'm Travis Cummings reporting in South City. We're here at the warehouse where all of the floats are housed before the big Mardi Gras Grand Parade. Take a look here. You see a crew, a family doing this for the very first time, riding the float here. Everyone's super excited where thousands are going to attend this year and flock into the city of St. Louis. Actually, 25% of the people we see attend are actually from outside of the region. Here's a map. The parade steps off at 11 a.m. Saturday at Bush Stadium, just east of Ballpark Village. It will then continue downtown south on Broadway, past Soulard and end at Anheuser-Busch Brewery. Designated Mardi Gras entry points in Soulard include 13th Street and Russell Boulevard. These are good places to get dropped off if you're catching Uber or Lyft. There's also 9th Street and Ann Avenue, Lafayette Avenue and Tucker Boulevard. The celebrations kick off tonight with the Mayor's Mardi Gras Ball at Union Station. That's going to be a great time there. And listen, you can follow us on air and online as we cover Mardi Gras 45. All right, before we go, throw me something, mister. <laughs> Reporting in South City, Travis Cummings, five on your side. All right, thank you, Travis. Several law enforcement agencies are preparing for the crowds in Soulard. St. Louis police tell us county police will join them to increase patrols around the main events. This is a reminder, be vigilant and follow the law while you celebrate this weekend. For everything you need to know about Mardi Gras and Soulard, just text the word Marty to 314-425-5355. We'll send the link straight to your phone. Right now, help for students in East St. Louis. The Little Bit Foundation and School District 189 announce a partnership, the first in the Metro East. Ribbon cutting ceremonies were held this morning at Officer Elementary and East St. Louis High Schools. Students at Officer will get support with essentials, literacy programming and nutrition. At the high school, students will have access to STEM curriculum and Little Bit's college and career readiness program. The Francis Howell community is weighing in on a new proposed curriculum on black studies. The discussion comes weeks after the school board reversed its decision to remove the original coursework. Five on your side's Laura Barczewski attended last night's board meeting where the board announced the first reading of the new curriculum. Several months ago, the Francis Howell Board of Education removed the two black studies electives because of their concerns about political bias in the previous curriculum. The school board's actions have been heavily scrutinized by students, parents, and taxpayers. It's been concerning, truly, to see a particular agenda being pushed uh, 
I think it should be first and foremost what's best for our kids, what's best for our students. And I don't see that happening and I don't see us being heard. Students staged various protests, walkouts, and even hosted a discussion about the issue. The board indicated they would only support reinstating the courses with a, quote, politically neutral curriculum. A spokesperson for the Francis Howell School District says the new curriculum for the Black Studies classes will be voted on in March, saying, quote, we're grateful for the many educators who have been involved in the important work of reviewing these courses and providing thoughtful revisions and to the patrons who have provided input this far. Only one person at the meeting spoke in favor of the board's actions and the new program of studies. You supported a new robust black history curriculum while rescinding the divisive Southern Poverty Law Center social justice of the old curriculum. Parent Amy Easterling says while the new black literature curriculum doesn't seem much different, the black history course is very different. Before it was a topical class, now it's organized chronologically. One thing I also noticed is if you read the description of the new curriculum, the word racism is never, ever mentioned. I understand that our administration is possibly in a bind with this board and they're trying to get something done that'll get approved, but I don't understand how you can talk about black history without acknowledging that racism in this country has existed and does still exist today. Laura Barch that was Laura Barczewski reporting. The district urged the community to go over the new coursework and send their comments to the school board or administration. They'll have the second reading and then vote on the curriculum on March 21st. A public memorial service will be held tomorrow for Jean Carnahan. The former first lady of Missouri and U.S. Senator died January 30th at the age of 90. The service is tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the Sheldon Concert Hall. Missouri Congressman Emanuel Cleaver will officiate. A public reception will take place after the service. A traffic note for you, avoid Interstate 270 in Madison County. Starting at 9 tonight, IDOT will close eastbound lanes between Riverview on the Missouri side and Route 3 in Illinois. One lane will remain open, but it'll likely cause traffic backups. Everything is expected to reopen by Monday morning. Still ahead, questions about President Biden's memory, the report that has the White House strongly pushing back. Plus, the special club only these three men belong to and why Sunday's Super Bowl will keep their streak alive. 